How's it going, everyone? It is I, Anime Outlet, and this is part four of What If Deku Was the Son of Mount Lady. And now, let's begin. As the rest of the day goes by, Isuku sits in his house, wondering what the next day at UA is going to bring to him. As the rest of the days of that week would go off without a hitch, no problems in sight as it was mostly just getting used to UA, no real hero work or anything like that. However, after three weeks of going to the high school, Isuku could just sense that something was going to happen that day. It had sort of an exciting feeling to it. As Izuku sprung out of bed, he would end up putting on his just UA uniform before heading off towards the high school. As Izuku would be walking, he would meet up with his two friends, Nedre Haro and Bakugo Katsuki, as they would then end up walking for towards the location of UA High School. Once they would arrive, they would walk in before sitting down in their respected seats in Class 1A, waiting for their teacher to arrive, as five minutes later, everyone would be seated, staring up towards the front of the room. I saw would slowly open the door before slowly walking in. Good morning, class. I assume any of you know what we're doing today, but for those that don't, Today, we're going to be going on a field trip to the USJ. It's basically just going to be a small rescue hero learning experience for you all. So, there really shouldn't be anything for us to do there besides learning what different types of locations you have to know and know by the back of your hand for rescue missions. As if you don't, that could cost in the life of an innocent civilian. So... Let's go, Aizawa would say with a serious tone, as they would all walk down to the locker rooms led by Aizawa, as he would then point them in the direction of the locker rooms as they had only been down there once before for the hero vs. villain assignment, as he would then point them in the direction of their respected locker rooms before walking off towards the bus bay, just saying, eh, they'll find it eventually. As they would all put their hero costumes on, supplied... Thankfully, by the support course, they would all put them on before rushing off to find the bus bay, where once they would get on and everyone was on the bus, the bus would speed off towards the massive j domed shaped building that happened to be the USJ. As the bus would then slowly end up arriving, Izuku and the rest of his class would pile out of the bus before staring in complete awe at how massive this building just happened to be. It completely towered over their entire class, and it wasn't even a skyscraper. As they would all be staring at this massive dome-shaped building, a small head would poke out of the door up at the top of the stairway, as finally the whole body would emerge, revealing the Hero 13. As she would step out of the doorway, she would end up stumbling down the stairs, slowly walking down them, before finally making it to Class 1A. Good morning, Class 1A! Thankfully, you all arrived on time, as we don't really have much time for you all to be here, as Class 1B is going to be coming in just around two hours. So, let's go. I saw her look over towards her before saying, 13, Class 1B's not coming. We actually have the whole day. Oh, well, that's even better. Means I can go into even more detail about the different locations. So, come on, 13 would say, motioning with her arm for the students to follow her. She would walk up the stairs before opening the doors, revealing that the place was even bigger on the inside, as all of the students' eyes would widen in shock, staring on at the massive complex of things before them. As all of them staring on, one of their eyes would then be fixated onto the fountain in the middle. One of them would be staring at it, just completely fixated on it because they couldn't get their eyes off of it they could just tell something was going to happen with that fountain as all of the sun to purple spiral would end up peering out of nowhere spiraling into a mass of giant portal as all of the sun hundreds upon hundreds of villains would step out of this portal each of them staring up towards where class 1a was as if they had known the exact location they would be in at the exact time as all of them would be stepping out of the portal finally the portal would start to shrink finally only revealing 
two last villains, a blue-haired villain and then the thing that must have caused the portal, as it looked to be made of the same substance that the portals had been made of. Good morning, you hey, the blue-haired one would say from the back. So, I just want to say we're the League of Villains, and we aim here to kill all of you, to take down the next generation, the blue-haired one would say. Sasuke, seeing this, would only look towards him before cracking his fingers. Well, I guess this is just going to be added practice, he would say. However, I saw would step forward or word before putting his hand out, motioning for them all to stop. Stop it, Izuku. You know very well you don't have enough experience to fight real villains. These may just look like thugs to you, but they're real villains after all. You could still get killed. They have no killing mercy against you, so don't think they'll just show mercy and not kill you just because you're a kid. I saw would say before jumping down. Thirteen, protect the students, would be the last thing I saw would say. Jumping down, fighting the massive horde of villains. However, the just purplish thing would end up just disappearing from I saw was eyesight. This was not good, but he had to focus on the larger crowd at hand. As Kirokiri, or the purplish thing, would disappear, it would then appear before the students. Good morning, Class 1A. I'm Kirogiri. A portal villain. So, I just fancy introducing myself. And I'd just like to say I'll have to spread all of you out now. So, say goodbye, as it could be the last time you'll be seeing one another. Kiru would say with a devilish yellow smile, dispersing all of the students and heroes in training throughout the massive complex of different rescue... Just, just rescue zones. As they would all be spread out, Izuku would start to fall, landing in the water zone. As Izuku landing on the boat in the water zone, would end up looking around the water, where he would end up seeing Mineta struggling to stay afloat, as he could see different type of shark-looking villains swimming rapidly towards him. Izuku would fail his hand out, project his fingers out towards Mineta as large tree branches would grow off of Izuku's fingers, going down grabbing onto Mineta. Suzuki would then yank Mineta out of the water. Mineta would fall to the ground, spitting out some of the water he had swallowed before looking up towards Izuku. Thank you, he would say, stuttering just from how scared he was. Suzuki would just say, no problem, Mineta. As Suyu also he would then jump up on the board. Suku would and say, well, that looks to be everyone in this zone. So, I guess we should start creating a plan, Suku would say towards the rest of them as they would both nod. So, I have an idea, it's a, before touching the boat as it would then grow ten times bigger, becoming absolutely massive, taking up the entire just pond that was inside the USJ. From we submerging all of the villains underwater, so there was no holes for them to escape. As Izuku would end up hearing banging from below deck, bangs, the villains would be banging on the hull of the ship. However, it would do no good, as the villains that had to come up to breathe for air would end up slowly suffocating, not being able to get any of that oxygen. And the villains would that could breathe through water would end up seeing their fellow brethren and fellow water cork users slowly drown to death. As they would end up seeing this, they would start to bang harder, but it would be no use. They were surely going to die. As this would be happening, Izuku would then jump overboard before they would end up hiding behind a rock, which conveniently had been enlarged by Izuku, so it was merely only a pebble beforehand. As this would be happening, Izuku would peer over the side of the rock, looking to see Aizawa struggling to fight a massive purple bird monster. For context of this, we go back five minutes. As Aizawa sees all of the students just get spread out, he would end up defeating the last villain standing there. However, before he could do anything, a portal would open up in front of him, revealing a monstrous zombie bird-looking thing, as it would step out before hearing from the blue-haired man, telling him to go and kill that black-haired person before going to kill all the rest of the students. Meanwhile, that blue-haired person was violently scratching their neck over and over again. Damn it, he would say. Where the hell is All Might? He should have been here, he would say. 
for All Might was strangely absent. As I saw, would end up hearing this, he couldn't really do anything, but having his face pounded in by the massive bird monster. As All Might would be sent flying backwards, slamming in to the steps, he would fall down, slouching down onto the steps. As the gnome would rush towards him, grabbing his head and slamming him into the ground, causing concrete and dirt to fly up into the air. As this would be happening, Zuki would step up to just try to intervene, however he would be pulled down by Asui. This isn't the time, Izuku. You see that thing? I saw him was already strong by himself, and if he can't beat it, then there's no chance you can, she would say. However, Izuku would hide his eyes just with his hair, as he would end up shadowing them, looking towards her. Look, I can't do this. I can't just let him just die like this. That's not something a hero would do, Suku would say. For Asui would look towards him. Don't you fancy your life at all? Don't you care? What would your mother think? Suku would only shake his head. I'm just telling her. She probably wouldn't care. Suzuki would then push the rock aside before stepping up. However, before he could do anything, Asui would grab his neck with her tongue, pulling him back down. Damn it, Izuku, listen to me. Aizawa clearly wanna, didn't want us to get into any trouble or get hurt. Just let this happen. Izuku would glare towards Asui. Do you not know what you're saying? It would yell towards her. You're just gonna let our own teacher die like that? I know it's only been three weeks that we've known him, but I can't just let him die. I can't just let that happen. Izuku would say, hey. As Asui would end up clenching her fists, letting go of Izuku's tears would start flowing out of her eyes. Damn it, Izuku, she would say as Izuku would stand up, pushing her off of him. As he would then rush over towards the Nomu, grinding back his fist, turning it into wood, punching the Nomu right in the stomach. As the Nomu would look down towards Izuku before giving off a screech, not in pain, but in anger. How dare this feeble boy come and hit him he's so weak too how dare he tr i had to say he's better than him with just a punch like that the nomu basically think to himself looking down towards zuku the mindless thing look down towards him staring on towards him with anger visible in his eyes so the nomu would grab onto zuku's head slamming him down into the ground zuku would end up out blood, holding on to his stomach as blood would flow out of his mouth. Zook would walk backwards after getting up from being slammed onto the floor. Walking backwards, Zook would fall down, staring up towards the Nomu. However, Zook would start to grow bigger and bigger before stomping on the Nomu. However, it proved useless as the Nomu would only grab Zuku's foot and tip him over, causing the giant to fall over. Zook would start to shrink down so he didn't hurt anyone who was behind him. Zazuku would shrink down and he would fall to the floor as the concrete tile that was beneath him would shatter at the impact. Some of it would go up, hitting him as it came back down. Zuku would be lying on the floor. He would end up seeing explosions fly. I got this, Zuku. Just stay back. Bakugo would say, rushing in towards the Nomu, sending an explosion, hitting it in its stomach before sending another explosion, causing him to fly back, before sending multiple explosions, changing its direction, flying all around the Nomu. Bakugo, stay back! He's too strong for you! Zuku would yell in an attempt to, try to tell Bakugo to get back. However, Bakugo would not listen. Naturally, would finally arrive, rushing to or the Nomu as well, punching the Nomu right across the face before using her energy cord to spray the Nomu with some of her energy. However, this would all prove useless, so the Nomu would regenerate with no marks on it at all. The Nomu would grab onto Jure, throwing her right into Izuku. She would knock Izuku back. Izuku would get up as Bakugo would then send another explosion, this one far po more powerful than his other ones, right at the Nomu as if some sort of revenge for just hurting both of his two best friends. However, this would do nothing towards the mindless, brainless creature. Sure, it had a brain, but it basically wasn't functioning. It wasn't like a human one. It was 
mindless. As the gnome would end up grabbing onto Bakugo's head, seeing it fly around, it would start to get angry about its attempt not to be able to ca not being able to capture him. Finally, the gnome would use its speed, grabbing onto Bakugo's head, lifting him up into the air. It would have his other hand completely flat, raising it over towards Bakugo's neck before slashing right down onto Bakugo's neck, cutting it cleanly. And that is where part four of What If Deku Was the Son of Mount Lady comes to an end. I hope you all did enjoy it, and if you did, please consider subscribing, as it really does help this channel out, and you can even be notified when the other parts of this series do end up coming out. I thank you all for watching once again, and goodbye.